and I will be reading from the New Living Translation of the Bible. Deuteronomy, chapter number two, verse 30. But King Sihon of Hezbon refused to allow us to pass through. Amen. Because the Lord, your God, made Sihon stubborn and defiant so he could help you defeat him as he had now done. Then the Lord said to me, look, I have begun to hand King Sihon and his land over to you. Begin now to conquer and occupy his land. The word of the Lord Amen. is blessed. Work with it, Doc. For a few moments. On today, I want to talk to you from the subject unlocking the enigma of possession. Unlocking the enigma of possession. And for a theme, I want to give you that we can have assurance of success in our endeavors to possess all that God has for us because of his promises and his guidance. Unlocking the enigma of possession. An enigma, my brothers and my sisters, is something that is puzzling or difficult to understand. It often refers to a person, situation, or problem that presents a challenge in figuring out its true nature or meaning. Are y'all with me? For many of us, the journey towards possessing all that God has for us can feel like an enigma. The journey sometimes deep in woods is puzzling. Amen. It's complex. Yes. And it's difficult to navigate. But as we reflect on this, we recognize that the process of pursuing our purpose can be complex and may present unexpected challenges along the way. Right. Do I got some folks Hallelujah. who have experienced some unexpected problems? When you try to do the best that you can for the service of the Lord. All right. These difficulties, Sister Rose Frank, can make it hard to see the path clearly. But these difficult times are also opportunities for growth and for a deeper understanding of self and a deeper understanding of who God is. Ultimately, HMBC, by embracing the enigma of possession, this can help us discover the riches of God's plans for us individually, collectively, and as a people. As we embark, on this journey of understanding what it means to possess all that God has promised us, we must acknowledge that there are often obstacles. Has anybody experienced some obstacles along the way? Yes. There are some obstacles that are strategically placed in our path to help us become better. Amen. Tell your neighbor, I'm becoming better. Just as the Israelites faced resistance 
when entering the promised land, we too encounter challenges that can make the process feel unattainable and confusing. I want us to understand that when we embrace the mysteries of the journey, it allows us to develop spiritual strength and stamina. Brother Tom, just like a puzzle, have we ever put together a puzzle? Just like a puzzle, it takes time for us to complete. Understanding our divine calling unfolds piece by piece, like the pieces of a puzzle. So we learn not only from our victories, but see, we also learn a lot from our setbacks. We learn a lot from our challenges. Yes, yes, yes. And we learn a lot when it comes to the opposition that rises up against us as we move. These setbacks, these challenges, and these oppositions that we come across, they teach us more about ourselves. And they deepen our relationship with God and our relationship with one another. Ultimately, the enigma of possession is not merely a riddle to solve. All right. But I want you to listen to me closely, Sister Patty. This is what I call a transformative journey. Because we are experiencing transformation along the way. Do I got some folks that are transforming up in here? See, you're not what you used to be. You're not the folks called you yesterday. But your name has been written in the last book of life. God has changed your name. Yes, yes. This has been a transformative journey and this transformative journey that we find ourselves on together shapes our faith and builds our character as we navigate the complexities of life. Deacon Smith, I want us to remain open to the lessons that God wants to teach us in doing so. We'll find clarity and strength to possess all that God has for us, turning the enigma into a powerful testimony of his faithfulness. The songwriter said, Are you never burdened with the Lord's care? Does the cross so you've been heavy. You were called to bear. Sister Sue count your many blessings. Name them one by one. And then you will be surprised to see what the Lord has done. Count your blessings. Name them one by one. Count your blessings. See what God has done. I dare you to start counting them. In today's narrative. We understand that God is talking to Moses. He has commanded Moses and the people to begin to move from the Arnon Gorge for my Bible studies. As Israel prepare to leave the wilderness uh -huh. of Ketamoth. Yes. Moses sent ambassadors to King Sihon of Hezbon uh -huh. with a proposal of peace. <laughs> my brothers and my sisters, King Sihon 
was the king of the Amorites and ruled from the city of Heshbon, which was a prominent city located east of the Jordan River. The Amorites were one of the groups occupying the land that is that the Israelites were journeying, journeying towards. Are y'all with me? Moses, he makes a simple request. A straightforward request to the king. Reverend Slater, he simply asked for safe passage through their territory. Amen. He assured the king that Israel, they ain't want no trouble. And they were willing to stay on the main road. And they won't go bother nobody. Furthermore, Moses understood economics. And he said, as we pass through, you can sell us food and bottle water. <laughs> and they were willing to pay for the ox tables. Amen. <laughs> they were willing to pay for the fried chicken. <laughs> and Sister Shirley, they were willing to pay for the mac and cheese. <laughs> Oh, God, no. <laughs> <laughs> I got a on it. <laughs> All they wanted was to pass through the land peacefully. They didn't want no trouble. All right. The Lord. In his sovereign will, made King Sion stubborn. Yeah. Not only did he make him stubborn, but he caused him to be defiant. Amen. And you know when God does something, he always does it for a purpose, yeah. for his glory, and for his honor. Yeah. Yeah. So he made him stubborn and defiant so that he could help Israel defeat him. All right. Even though Moses, he tried to negotiate peace. Remember, he didn't want no status. He didn't want no problems. He didn't want any issues. But the king refused to allow the Israelites to pass through the land. The Lord spoke again to Moses. He said, I'm beginning to hand over the king to you. But not only am I handing over the king, I'm handing over his territory to Israel. Amen. He commanded them to conquer and take possession of the land. As a result, the king, defiant and stubborn, declares war on Israel. And he began to assemble his forces, the army, the navy, the marines, he began to assemble his forces at Jahaz. However, when the battle commenced, Israel fought with courage and determination under the Lord's command. Amen. See, the head of their army was God. Amen. As they began to attack, the 
Lord strengthened them. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever been attacked by your adversary? Amen. And in the midst of the attack, the Lord began to strengthen you. Hallelujah. Strengthen you to have more peace. He strengthened you to have more joy. He strengthened you to have more courage. He strengthened you to have more determination and stand against your adversary. But see, July, he strengthened him there. And he gave them the victory over the king and his armies. The Israelites struck down every man, every woman, and child in the city of King Sihon, leaving no survivors. See, understand that this was an important moment for Israel as they not only conquered the king's land, they also took possession of the fertile territory that would sustain them as a people. Through this victory, my brothers and my sisters, Israel experienced God's faithfulness and power firsthand. When we are also triumphant, we realize that our victories were experiences granted to us by God and God alone. And the only reason we experience the victory is because of God's power, God's presence, and his faithfulness. See, the songwriter said, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, the mercies I see. My brothers and my sisters, Israel's triumph over the king demonstrated that when they followed God's guidance, Amen. they could overcome anything. My brothers and my sisters, when we follow Amen. God's guidance, yeah. do I got some folks following God up today? When we follow God's guidance, Sister Monique, in the midst of our, our adversity, we become overcomers. Do I got some overcomers up in here? Overcoming brokenness. Overcoming distress, overcoming sickness, overcoming family issues. You're an overcomer because God is with you. Yeah. Finally, the defeat of King Sion serves as a reminder, Elder Kid, of God's sovereignty and his support for his people in their journey towards the promised land. Amen. For us, we have the assurance that God is with us. Wow. Do you believe on today that no matter what you would do, God is with us? Yes. In the midst yes. of an election, yes. God is still with us. Watch yourself, Watch yourself. You're walking heaven. In the midst of police brutality, God is with us. In the midst of an economic crisis, God is with us. In the midst of COVID-19 being on the rise, God is with us. We can give God praise because no matter what we're going through, he will see us through. We will come through triumphant and we got the victory because God is with us. Hallelujah. The Bible that said, How should we respond when we understand God's promises but we face concerns? Number one, hear me closely. 
there must be confidence in God's power. Amen. That's right. That's right. As believers, we need to have confidence in God. Well, yes, yes, yes. Think of the We have confidence in God simply because of who he is. He's our creator. He's our sovereign Lord. He's our maintainer. And he's our sustainer regardless of any challenge that we may face. Ray, it is essential for, for us to recognize God every moment in every situation that we deal with. We have to understand, church, that God is omnipotent. That means, for those who don't know, God is all powerful. All right? yes, he is. Yes, he is. And he's all powerful in every aspect of his nature, in every aspect of his being. Yes. Mm. This understanding of God's omnipotence is critical, especially in moments of doubt. It's critical in moments of fear. But understand HMBC by recognizing God's omnipotence. Yeah. We can find strength and reassurance through his abilities. Yeah. When we encounter obstacle, and let me tell you something, you will yes. encounter obstacles. You will. And these obstacles, when they come out of the way, many times will overwhelm us, the honor. But knowing that God has the power to intervene. Knowing that God has the power to maintain us. Knowing that God has the power to sustain us. It enables us to face challenges with confidence. For Christ our live and for Christ our doubt. Ultimately, God's omnipotence well, not only strengthens our faith, but it empowers us to live boldly. When we live boldly, we can step out on faith. When we live boldly, we can take risks for the kingdom. When we live boldly, we can share his love with others even when they don't love us back. And we do this by knowing that we serve a God who is capable of doing anything but fair. The Bible says he can accomplish more than we can ask or think. Point number one, HMBC, there must be confidence in God's power. Yes, yes, yes. But not only must there be confidence in God's power, Jason, there must be confidence. In God's faithfulness. My brothers and my sisters, we understand that we serve an all knowing God. All know. 
We serve an omnipotent God. And think of the Simpson, this all-powerful God has promised never to leave us nor forsake us. When we think about God's faithfulness, we can clearly see his faithfulness in the story of the three Hebrew boys. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. In Deuteronomy, I'm sorry, Daniel chapter 3, verses 16 through 30. Talk, Doc. These young men were cast into the fiery furnace, but their faith was in Almighty God. They were death in the face, but their faith was in all my God. Yes, yes. Even in this intense moment, and this is an intense moment, yes. if you've ever burned yourself, you truly understand the magnitude of this moment of being cast into a fiery furnace. All right. But in the midst of the heat, in the midst of the fire, God didn't abandon them. And we understand how the story ends. See, the king looks into the fiery furnace and he sees Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They are not consumed. But the Bible says he sees the fourth figure. And it looks like the Son of God. See, this reminds me, my brothers and my sisters, that no matter what we're going through, if we find ourselves in a fiery situation, God is right there. He walks with me. He talks with me. And he tells me. Point number one, there must be confidence in God's power. Yes. Point number two, there must be trust in God's faithfulness. But this is the last, this, this is the kicker right here. Let him use it, let him use it. My God. Point number three, I want you to hear me closely. We must embrace an occupant's mindset and move forward in courage, unafraid of adversaries. Understand this, and I'm going to let you get home to that barbecue. <laughs> or the ox tails. <laughs> Having an occupant mindset, I want you to hear it. And for you note takers, jot this down. Having an occupant mindset means fully embracing and living out God's promises while remaining steadfast in the faith. In this passage, God reassures the Israelites about their journey into the promised land, emphasizing his control over their circumstances. See, sometimes we may be confused about our circumstances because we don't know what the next hour or tomorrow is going to bring. But we have to be like Israel and simply understand that God is the master of our circumstances. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, when we adopt an occupant mindset, our actions demonstrate a strong faith in 
God's promises, an active pursuit of his plans, and the confident recognition of his authority. I want you to hear that last one. A confident recognition of God's authority in every aspect, nook and cranny of our lives. This occupant mindset, it encourages us as believers to fully embrace the reality of God's promises no matter what challenges we may encounter. So there must be confidence in God's power. There must be trust in God's faithfulness. And we must embrace an occupant's mindset and move forward with courage, unafraid of any adversary. My brothers and my sisters, as we take ownership of all God has promised us, we must demonstrate courage in the face of opposition. When we encounter those who desire to slow down our progress, we must demonstrate courage in the face of opposition when we are trying to handle the process peacefully and trouble seems to find us we must demonstrate courage in the face of opposition when we encounter doubt that threatens to derail our mission when we step out in faith trusting God to order our steps when we seek to lift up others while navigating our own struggles, we must demonstrate courage in the face of opposition as we embrace change and allow God to reshape our lives when we feel overwhelmed yet choose to stay focused when we are led to serve those in need, despite of our own burdens, we demonstrate courage in the face of opposition. See the songwriter said, at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light in the burdens of my heart broke away. See you today, by faith, I receive my fight and now I'm happy now I'm happy and if we see are you happy all the day see my brothers and my sisters there's uncertainty in the land but it's time to take possession contrariness they be trying to take us back but it's time for us to take possession. Today, you may be discouraged and in need of a breakthrough. Tell yourself it's time to take possession. You may be all alone and you may need a freedom. It's time to take possession. You may be weary from your journey and need a little rest. You may be struggling to find hope in difficult circumstances. There may be situations trying to lead you astray, but tell yourself it's time to take position. Obstacles may seem insurmountable. Difficult circumstances may have you devastated. You may be searching for clarity in times of confusion. It's time to take possession. See, because he lives, we can face a better tomorrow. 